Good morning, and welcome to the Wednesday devotions for First United Methodist Church in Mount Gilead, North Carolina. I've got a couple of announcements to make. Uh, one is this evening, uh, the choir members here are going caroling, and we need them to be at the church and in order to leave at 5 o'clock. So uh, if you're here a few minutes early, that would be wonderful. 4.45 would be perfect. So we look forward to seeing you tonight and, and to take care of that. There will be a celebration of life this Sunday uh, for Betty Matheson. Uh, the service will be in the sanctuary at 3 p.m. with the reception to follow in the fellowship hall. Um, also, members, church members here are asked to help with the food pantry this Saturday. It's our turn. It's our Saturday to help. And so if you can be there at 7.30 a.m., we muchly appreciate it. Thank you very much for that. Um, also, there's a Christmas Eve program that we is traditional here. Didn't happen last year exactly the same way that we normally do it, but this year we will follow our old format, and um, it'll be a service of carols and, and candles, 7 p.m. on Christmas Eve. Let's bow for a word of prayer now. Our her dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many gifts you've given us. We thank you for our lives themselves, the love that you've given us, and the love that you share with all, everyone. Help us to remember whose we are and who we are, Lord. Keep us always. Thank you. Amen. So the theme of this uh, today's devotion is love. That's a kind of a common theme um, at this time of the year, uh, especially when we think about the, the, the gift, uh, the love that was shared with us. God's act of sending his son into the world to live as a human instead of the holy being that he was and is and, and will be. That's the ultimate example of love. It's hard not to have your heart warmed by the sight of the little baby in the manger that we see in community nativity scenes and, and sets. And we even have them all scattered all around our house, little, little replicas of those things. Uh, and that's not a bad thing to, to gather those things up and to set them out at Christmas time. It because, primarily because it reminds us of why we're doing everything we're doing and, and to try to put that in the foremost of our mind. Sometimes we get so caught up in the buying and the baking and the partying and the decorating frenzy uh, that we need to be reminded about that little tender baby in the manger. The Christmas hymn, Love Came Down at Christmas, tells us that love came down at Christmas, love all lovely, love divine. Love was born at Christmas, star and angel gave the sign. Love shall be our token, love be yours and love be mine. Love to God and all men, love for plea and gift and sign. The Upper Room devotional for December 9th shares this story. The writer says, our hearts were broken. A few months earlier, we had lost our beloved dog. One day, my husband and I felt it was time to visit the local animal shelter and look for a pet who might fill that hole in our hearts. And we found him. Now, only weeks after bringing him home, he runs to greet us, holds his tail up high, uh, chases after his ball nonstop, and is one of the happiest dogs. If the love that my husband and I have given to that little dog can completely change him in such a wonderful way, how much more can the love of God change all of us. So I'd like to share a couple of verses with you from 1 John 4, verse 16. And so we know and rely on the love of God has the, on the love of God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. And then uh, chapter 4 verse 19 says, we love because he first loved us. And verse 21 and he gave, has given this command, whoever loves God must also love his brother. Because God loved us first, we're able to do things that we couldn't possibly do otherwise. We can replace <clears throat> anger and forgiveness. We can replace prejudice with acceptance. And we can work toward peace in our families and our neighborhoods and in the world. We can love, and that is the most important thing to get out of this. Let's pledge to look for opportunities to surprise others with acts of love <coughs> during this Christmas time and throughout the year. And this subject reminds me of the praise chorus from Jars of Clay. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. And they will know we are Christians by our love. 
from the Deadly Devotional Guide, Our Daily Bread, and this is a, a one that's for January 2nd of, of this coming year, 2022, and it must have been written uh, describing thing, the time of uh, teaching during the pandemic. Uh, because we read, the professor ended his online class in one of two ways each time. He'd say, see you next time, or have a good weekend. Some students will, would respond with, thank you, and you too. But one day, a student replied, I love you. Surprise, he replied, I love you too. That evening, the classmates began to create an I love you chain for the next time a class was to meet. They were doing that in appreciation for their professor who had to teach to a screen on his computer and not in in-person teaching like he really preferred to do. A few days later when the class met, when he finished teaching, the professor said, see you next time. And one by one, the students replied, I love you. They continued this practice for months. The teacher said this created a strong bond with his students and now he feels like they're family. In, again, in 1 John 4, verses 10 through 21, there's selected things picked out here. Uh, we, as a part of God's family, find several reasons to say, I love you, to God. One is he sent his son as a sacrifice for our sin. He gave us his spirit to live in us. Um, he enables us to love him and others because he first loved us. We, the people of God, should take time and opportunity to share our reasons for loving him, making an I love you chain for God. And that will bring him praise and will bring us closer together and closer to God. So I'm gonna leave you with those two things that I want you to remember. One is let's pledge to look for opportunities to surprise others with acts of love. And then also to make that, to start an I love you chain for God. Let's bow our heads again for prayer. Dear God, help us not to wait for others to show love to us, but give us courage to love them first. Show us ways to creatively, creatively express that love. Amen. Thank you very much for watching.